if someone says so and so is touring, uh, especially if it's someone I haven't heard in a while, I always have to say, I always have to go and look up who who's in the band. <laughs> is it the right. is it the guitarist that you want to see and whatever else? Um, so they did. Uh, so that was general public, but then the other guys from the beat, um, Andy Cox and Dave Steele, they formed Fine Young Cannibals in yeah. uh, 89. Yep. They uh, floundered about for a little bit, didn't know what they were going to do, decided they wanted to form another band. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they uh, actually put out an ad for a, a singer and they got uh over 500 tapes to review which took them somewhere around eight months to go through them all and realize that they all were not a good fit only to go back to roland gift who was playing for oh god it's oh. not anarchy it's it started with an a i can't remember the name of the band he was I, in hard it was even a band that was hard to pronounce but i didn't recognize the band you're right yeah the, the band had one single that unfortunately didn't really do much other than that but um, he ended up joining them, and they formed Fine Young Cannibals. And uh, their first album was, I thought, was amazing. It was, it was soul. It was new wave. It was rockabilly. It was, it was a mixture of a lot of things. Um, and I, if, if anybody who's watching this hasn't seen like, or heard Johnny Come Home, you, you need to listen to that yeah. because his his vocal range is just ridiculous. That's a good one. Yep. Um, the second album is the one that really took off with the raw and the cooked. Right. Yep. They actually uh, were trying to get Prince to produce the album. And they said, because they, they weren't really happy with anybody was, that they were uh, getting uh, recommended. So like, oh, we want Prince. And Prince's management said, no, Prince doesn't do that. Um, sorry. Um, but there's this guy that works with Prince and, uh, he'll do it. So there is a, a slight Prince connection, but it's, it's not Prince. And so their hit singles, she drives me crazy and good thing. All of whatever. Yeah. Uh, those are, those are great songs. And Suspicious Minds was on that. Record. Suspicious Minds was on that one as well. Yep. Um, they actually, the, the album was kind of a compilation of, uh, they had, did a song for a TV soundtrack. They did a side project called uh, Two Men in a Drum Machine or something like that. I, I forget the exact, I apologize. But they did this weird side group and the name of the band was like, you know, Two Men, a Drum Machine and, and something else. Um, and they took one song off that album. So the, the uh, Raw and the Cook is actually several projects put together along with some, you know, uh, she drives me crazy. A good thing, and those songs that were new for the album. I guess that makes sense with the title, then the raw and the cooked. I guess that's maybe that's what happens to that. That could be, yeah. Besides and whatever, almost kind of that that kind of thing. Uh, I, on a side note, here is uh, there's a there's a big gaping time frame in the rock cave that I don't cover and haven't covered, and I every year I think I'm gonna just spend a week doing it. But from 1980, around 1987 to 19. 89 or even 90 um i was listening to a lot of more pop music i mean i was listening to uh like dance music i was listening to snap and uh bell biv devoe and all these things and i've never covered any of that music because it's not rock but every once in a while i think maybe i should just do a week of uh that that late 80s dance music that maybe doesn't hold up but was still a pretty big part of our lives when it came to parties sure or i knew yeah. you'd say that, <laughs> that was, well i mean let's, let, let's be honest that that's the stuff that every time you know we showed up for a party that's what was playing at, at that time you know you're not going to show up to a keg party or a dance party and have them play teen you know smells like teen spirit you know um so so anyway i, I do i do think about that a little bit because th this was right in the middle even though this wasn't you know, it wasn't, you know, New Jack Swing or anything like that. It was that time of MTV and MTV, you know, downtown Julie Brown and all that stuff. And the the, the dance music was popular, but I haven't done that in the cave. So I don't know. That was, yeah, that was, I mean, honestly, that was right before the, 
demise of MTV as a, a music video channel. Right. Um, cause they, they were experimenting. They were, they were getting a lot of the dance music, a lot of the rap, the, uh, you know, that kind of soul music. They were getting away from, you know, the new wave kind of stuff that, you know, I think got people like me and you interested them in the first place. Uh, and it became more like uh, TV shows after that. Right. Yeah, it became game shows and TV shows and real world and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, then um, Fine Young Cannibals, they are done after that second one, right? And uh, they they do, that's when they are doing solo projects and they're back to doing, um, each doing their own version of the beat. Um, and... Uh, I read somewhere along the way um, that as time went on, uh, they got some of their music was respected. The save, save it for later, which you talked about. Bands that have performed Save It for Later include The Who and mm -hmm. Pete Townsend by himself, and uh, Pearl Jam even did it uh, at a concert. So uh, that that song is lingering and uh, and uh, very good, um, but they. Um, they did do their separate versions, and uh, you saw a show. I saw a couple. I saw Dave Wakeling uh, a couple of times down here in Atlanta. <clears throat> he can still. I mean, he still sounds. I mean, he's close to seventy years old, but he still sounds the same as he does on the albums. Uh, still plays guitar. Uh, it's it's an enjoyable show. A um, lot of fun. Uh, you know, they don't have. I mean, his his hype guy wasn't quite Rankin Roger, but you know, you do what you got, I guess. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it was uh, interesting that um, Fine Young Cannibals at one point was one of the biggest bands in the world when Ron the, the Cook came out, um, which led them to be cast as, as a band in a movie, which unfortunately probably killed the band because the lead singer Roland Gift decided I really like this acting thing it's a lot easier than being a musician so he quit the band to become an actor uh, went on to to be in several movies and a bunch of TV shows uh, but that was the end of Fine Young Campbell's and at that point uh, I know Andy and David they uh, I, I'm going to get them backwards I think David went on to production and Andy went on to become a DJ um but they've both done extremely well for themselves doing that. And Roland has, has done lots of movies. Like I said, uh, he does show up on TV. Everyone wants to sing some more. He's still got that great voice. Uh, unfortunately, Rankin Roger passed away uh, about four years ago. He had cancer. Um, so the, from the four main members, um, that, that's kind of what's going on with them. Um Tell you one one quick story, real real quick that I got from the book that I I thought you would appreciate. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Dave Wakeling was pushing Rankin Rogers so hard to uh, split off so they could make more money and only have to split you know the proceeds for the band two ways as opposed to seven. So they they went out and they did you know their first album which did pretty well and the second album which unfortunately didn't. So he said, yeah, between those two albums, we sold just under a hundred thousand albums which you know isn't bad uh fun young campbell's had two albums they sold over seven million copies so they they did a little bit better than we did yeah uh, <laughs> just by a little bit just just a little tad so yeah i think they uh might have missed out on a payday or two there All right um yeah so um that's a lot. That's a lot. We got a lot of we got a lot of content in there between that, and a lot of people don't know the connection between these bands, and so yep. uh, there's some great stuff there, right? I mean, a lot of good music there. I mean, there there were what seven albums altogether between the three bands, uh, three yeah three two two. So there, even though it's only seven albums, there's a lot of hits on those seven albums. Uh, you know, I always said it would be be kind of like a, one of those dreams of mine to see a, a concert where, you know, you've got general public opening up, the Fine Young Cannibals coming out second, then everybody coming back and doing the English beat last. That would be an amazing concert, but yeah. never happened, obviously. That would have been amazing. Uh, yeah, I like know that... 20-something singles in the UK. 
Yeah. They were on uh, Fans Reunited. I don't know if you ever saw that show. I didn't see that particular one, but I remember the show, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the whole premise, oh, we're going to get bands back together. For... So they brought Dave back from the U.S. over to England. They found Roger. And the two of them agreed that they would do a concert with, with Andy and Dave. And the other two guys were like, no, not, not happening. And they shut that down. So there's never been a reunion, unfortunately. Yeah, that's 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 too bad. Yeah. All right, brother, we're gonna wrap this up, I think, because I don't know how many minutes we have, but this will probably be a two-parter because I think that works out well for people when I, uh, you, you know, when I divide it in half. All right, fair enough. Minutes and seven minutes or something like that, but we'll see. I don't know how long this was, so we'll we'll, we'll see how how it works out. Well, you can you can do your splicing and dicing it. I'll add all the effects and put another ten minutes into it. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it's been awesome having you on here. And yes, yeah, season five opener with Michael Murray. The first time we've had a guest on a season opener. So there you go. That gets you a jacket just by itself. There you go. Well, I'm, I'm still chasing Paul Chabot, but you know, we'll, we'll get there at some point. That's true. And he's going to be over here. He, I told you, he lives right around the corner from me. You're uh, so you're at a disadvantage because he can just pop in and we can just throw something on. But you're you're get you're catching up for sure. Uh, so we have a lot of music to talk about, you and I. I'm looking forward to season five. I'm going to try to churn out as many episodes as I can. I know you hold me to task on that, and I uh, and I appreciate that because uh, I, you know, I just uh, I, I love doing my thing. It just uh, it's a lot of fun, and you've been here for the whole ride. So I appreciate you being on, and look forward to whatever our next topic is. Well, I'll tell you, it, it's it, it always makes my day a little bit better when I come downstairs, get a cup of coffee get my iPad out. And the first thing I see is did, did Mark do another episode? So You're looking forward to that happening. Watched at 4 45 AM. And yes, that, then that's true. You don't usually see it. If it's not there by 5 AM, then typically I haven't. Uh, but yeah, we're going to work on that. All right, buddy. All right. So uh, thanks for again for being on. We'll, we'll have you on again soon. We'll be chatting on the side with whatever concerts we're going to and uh, what music we're listening to. Uh, and uh, looking forward to another great season. Thanks again, Michael Murray. I'm going to take, take us out with this one. You're going to get ready to do the outro. We'll, we'll do it. Okay, all right. So, uh, every hand up. Day, I hope it involves music and let's go on the catch on the flip side. It's over. Go home.